Jeff, it's been a while since we've been on a mountain hike. It has, Ray. I mean, maybe we've been getting lazy lately. I don't know, but uh, but we're going to fix it today for sure. Well, it looks like a lot of uphill climbing ahead. It is. We are heading to the very roof of Vermont today, which is the top of Mount Mansfield. And what are we hoping to find there? Two things, although one you can only see from a distance, and had we thought to take a long distance gander as we were driving up to Mount Mansfield, we would have noticed that the mountain looks kind of like an elongated face Hmm. looking skyward. Got it, yeah. Not the first face in a mountain range that we've seen, though. No, no, and this one truly requires a little more imagination than some of the others. But our main target, what we're really looking for, is a strange creature they say lurks on this mountain. A creature unlike any other found anywhere else in the world. Today, we're on the hunt for the Wampahoofus. Hey, I'm Jeff Belanger. Welcome to episode 352 of the New England Legends podcast. And I'm Ray Osher. Thanks for being with us on our quest to chronicle every legend in New England one story at a time. Most of our leads come from you, so please reach out to us anytime through our website. We love hearing about the strange monsters, ghosts, roadside oddities, and other weirdness you've encountered and you think we should check out. So we'll go searching for the elusive Wampahoofus right after this word from our sponsor. The Wampa Hoofus? <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> it sounds like some old-fashioned disease. This child either has whooping cough or a bad case of Wampa Hoofus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that definitely sounds like an old disease. So here's a little more about Mount Mansfield. It's 4,393 feet above sea level. It's the tallest peak in Vermont. It's located in the northern part of the state. Stowe Mountain and Ski Resort is located just a bit to the east of Mount Mansfield. Originally, the Abenaki people of this region had a word for the mountain that translated to Moosehead Mountain. Besides a few ski resorts, there's not much population in this part of Vermont. Well, not the human kind anyway, but plenty of animals like moose, deer, bears, raccoons. And if we're to believe the stories, there's also a strange creature called the Wampahoofus, or at least there used to be. So we're making our way up Maple Ridge Trail. We're around the 3,000 foot level of the mountain. Since it's a clear day, we can see the summit above us. According to this trail sign, the forehead or top is about 1.1 miles away. And oh, look at that. Wampahoofus Trail is half a mile ahead. So I'd say we're getting close. (laughs) Now they say the Wampahoofus lurks between the 2,600 foot and the 3,200 foot level here on the rocky and steep inclined parts of the mountain. Many of these trails were blazed and named about a century ago. Now, I found a reference to the Wampahoofus Trail at least as far back as 1936. So let's head back there and search for this mysterious creature. It's early November of 1936 here on Mount Mansfield. The trees are all bare and there isn't much snow on the ground yet. Which is perfect because first, there's no bugs around to annoy Mm. us. And second, we have a lot more visibility to spot any kind of animal that might be lurking on the mountain. Yeah, we're lucky there isn't much snow because this region can get some epic storms. We'll have to keep an eye on the sky just in case the weather turns. Yeah, for sure. So this mountain has been getting a lot more people visiting since some of the trails have been blazed through here. Hiking mountains is becoming increasingly popular, which means... Which means people are walking into territories that had only been the realm of animals before. So people might be spotting critters that don't lurk near their towns. Good point. Now, the Wampahoofus Trail is one of the original trails marked on this mountain. It's named after this strange creature, a creature lumberjacks have talked about for years, though sometimes it goes by the name Sidehill Gouger. Sidehill Gouger? <laughs> the Sidehill Gouger, or Wampahoofus, only lives on hillsides. Uh. It's a mammal. It's been described as like part deer, part wild boar. And two of the legs on one side of their body are about half the size of the legs on the other side, which is why they move so quickly, darting laterally on a mountainside. The longer legs reach the lower slope, and the shorter legs are uphill. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. (laughs) So the two right legs could be twice the length as the two left legs? Exactly. Well, at least for half of them. Half of them? So they say the males travel in a clockwise direction and the females move in a counterclockwise direction. So the females would have two left legs twice the length as their right legs. That's the quick way to tell them apart, which side legs are longer. And to make little wampahoofuses, I guess they have to intersect their paths just right. And they move so... What was that? What was that? I don't know. I I just saw a brown blur of fur. 
Do you think it could have been? I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, it was moving so fast. But that's exactly how they described the Wampahoofus moving. If an animal like that only ever lives on this mountain, can't be a lot of them. Okay, well, here's the thing. Some suggest the Wampahoofus may have been able to migrate west, but it took two very clever Wampahoofuses to do it. If they can only travel clockwise or counterclockwise on the mountain, how could they move through valleys and things like that? Okay, so they say a very clever male and a very clever female Wampahoofus figured out if they got side by side with their short legs touching, they could hold each other's short legs and then walk on their two sets of long legs. Now, Jeff, as you know, I'm no zoologist. You're not. But that sounds insane. (laughs) It's what they say. Most agree the creature originated in New England, but may have made it as far west as the Great Lakes region. But it gets weirder. Oh, I can't wait. There's even stories of Vermont farmers crossbreeding their dairy cows with the Wampahoofus, so the cow could, you know, graze better on the sides of hills and mountains. (laughs) Uh, You'd think there'd be some photos or write-ups on a unique cow like that. Yeah, you'd think. So earlier, all we saw was a blur of brown fur. We can't really say we saw one now. No, I'm not sure what that was. I mean, a scurrying critter is not unique to these woods. Being so few and far between, the assumption is that the Wapahoofus had but recently gone extinct, which means at this point, we may never spot one. All that's left is the name of this trail on Mount Mansfield. And that brings us back to today. So, to be fair, there's nothing in the historical or fossil records to suggest the Wampahoofus was a real creature. But at the same time, every story starts somewhere. I mean, if you've ever seen a nature documentary about mountain goats, it's pretty amazing how sure-footed these animals are. Yeah, sure. They can race across hillsides that you or I would fall down. No, I get that. And maybe from a distance, if you saw a creature darting along the side of a mountain and you couldn't see the legs on one side, you might assume that the only way they could move that quick was to have two short little legs on the other side. And then there's the description of looking like it's a part deer, part boar. Though boars aren't indigenous to Vermont, some have slipped through over the years having been brought in. So if one crossbred with another animal... You might have a Wampahoofus. Exactly. I had read another story that suggested that the reason the Wampahoofus went extinct is that their legs got shorter and shorter over time, Until they just couldn't walk anymore. (laughs) That's funny. Talk about getting evolution wrong, right? Right? I mean, as people began to invade these once virgin mountains and forests, no doubt they encountered creatures that were unfamiliar. In a desperate attempt to explain what they saw, maybe a story was invented. A story that was passed around enough until it was given a name that stuck. And since that story stuck around, we can't help but wonder if something darts in front of us on the mountain that maybe, just maybe... It's the Wampahoofus. And that takes us to After the Legend, where we dig deeper into this week's story and sometimes veer off course. After the Legend is brought to you by our amazing Patreon patrons. Our patrons keep this show going and growing. They help with our hosting, production, marketing, and all the other costs it takes to bring you two stories each week. It's just three bucks per month. And for that, they get early ad-free access to new episodes. They get bonus episodes and content no one else gets to hear. They get discounted ticket deals to our events, like the show we have coming up September 21st, and so much more. Please head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to help us out. And to see some pictures of Mount Mansfield, click on the link in our episode description or go to our website and click on episode 352. So, uh, yeah, the the, Mont- uh, the Wampahoofus, or uh, Side Hill <laughs> Gouger, also known as the Side Hill Dodger, Side Hill Hoofer, Side Hill Gazink, Side Hill Ousel, Side Hill Loper, Side Hill Glute, the <laughs> Gas, I don't even know that one, Sidewinder, Wampus, Boofum, <laughs> Godafro, Hunkus, Rickaboo, Racker. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> Proc, Gwinter, or Cuttercuss. Um, amazing. So, Clearly, there's Why something so many other, names? because <laughs> someone saw something and it's a whatchamacallit. Yeah. It's a who's he, what's it. And um, yeah. Those uh, those animals, like it make, the, the, the length of the legs makes sense now to me. Sure. Because you've seen them before, right? Yeah. Hopping around a hillside. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So mountain goats. Yeah. Um, it appears, if you've ever seen one photographed where they're standing on a really steep incline, mm. It appears as though two of the legs are shorter. What's happening is their shoulders just allow for the movement. Sure. Right? They're the same size if they were on level ground. Um, But if you saw something really adept at running on a steep, steep incline, Mm. you'd be like, how do you do that? Right? With like four legs the same length. 
And then you say, well, it would only make sense that two of them must be short. Yeah. <laughs> Evolution would cause that, I would imagine, after a while. So there's animals that have much shorter, you know, two legs compared to the other, like a kangaroo, mm. right? Like really long, huge, strong back legs and right. tiny little arms, like, you know, and there's there's various creatures. So that's not unusual, but left or right, that is. Yeah, that is. Because that just seems horrible. growing up on a mountainside. I guess, you know? yeah. Um, so my friends who run marathons will tell you, you, you need to switch the side of the road you're running on as you go, alternate every mile or whatever. And the reason is there's a natural crown to a road. Oh, right, yeah. So the, the middle of the road is the highest point, so water and ice slip off. If you stay on one side, one of your legs for all 26.2 miles comes down, you know, yeah. half inch or an inch lower than the other, which is enough to really mess up your, your adjustments, your spine, your back, and right. so on over the span of a 26-mile race. So you got to switch sides. So imagine if you're just always, always, always on a super steep incline, <laughs> yeah. right? Maybe one leg atrophies. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so someone saw something weird. Someone tried to identify it and, uh, and gave it a name. Yeah. And we, you know, we've talked about this. Once it has a name, it's got a name. It's a thing. And it's real. Yeah. And it's real. Now you go look for it. And it's on a sign, by the way. It's on this trail sign. Right. It's right so there it's for all to see. It's got to be real, real. Wampahoofus Trail, the official brown engraved and painted sign. Mm. Yeah. No, it's it's amazing. You think, uh, I'm trying to picture what the wampa looks like in um, uh, Return of the Jedi. <laughs> oh, right. Like the, the, the bat wing thing that sticks to the window of the uh, was that the, wa- was that the wa- Wampum. Or Wamp- wa- wampa. Oh, whatever it was called. Yeah. yeah. Womp Romp Rat? No, I don't know. No, I think, isn't the wampa the, uh, the thing they ride, the, the big hairy thing? And maybe oh, that was more Star Wars. I think maybe. that was Star Wars. The uh, Sand People rode that thing. I think oh, that's a wampa. Maybe looks nothing like what nothing we described. Like this. No, but I wonder if that was an inspiration. Maybe mm. that that name wampa. You don't hear that every day. Good point. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So there's another Abenaki legend from the region. I'm going to say this wrong. My apologies. The Gisi Awas. Oh, it's uh, going to be so offended. Yeah. So it was uh, described as a monstrous man-eating creature resembling an enormous stiff-legged hairless bear. Yeah, that's a name you don't want to get wrong. You don't want to upset something like that. With an oversized head. It literally means great bear. So, <laughs> I like, I like that. You have to add that in. Slippery with, scare? No, with an overnight, uh, over, over sized. sized head. Thank you. Slippery skin. Yeah. Like, oh, slippery skin. I don't know. Oh, oh, I mean, oh. We're, we're in the same you're neighborhood. Connected. You're connected. You're bringing it around full circle. Yeah. Oh, slippery you skin. Get, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's a story. Maybe. It's maybe. a story, you know? So suddenly it's got a name and, you know, a weird thing. But yeah, when you see the sign, uh, it, it's a very popular trail because mm. it's well maintained. The signs are there and everything. But if you've never heard the story and you don't know the word, like, you don't forget it. Yeah, sure. Like, you know, like Forehead Trail. All right. You know, uh, Pine Ridge Trail. Yeah. Okay, all right. I get it. Pines Ridge. Got it. Yeah. Wampa Hoofus. <laughs> what the heck is that? That's something you're singing to yourself yeah. the whole time on the mountain. It's the name of a you're... Muppet. It's got to be something, <laughs> yeah. right? There was Animal and there was, you know. Wampa Hoofus. And Wampa Hoofus. Right. <laughs> Big Bird's friend, I think. That is Mr. Wampa Hoofus. That is funny, though, because you remember Snuffleupagus. That's a name you remember. I mean. Hi, Big Bird. <laughs> so weird <laughs> not creepy at all <laughs> not, not not even it was a little. so endearing as a kid but yeah. now when you grow up you're like oh big bird was a psychotic bird it, get in the van big bird <laughs> <laughs> or maybe she, big bird would do something she or he uh, big bird i think big bird's a he do we know that i, I don't know okay Can't anyway do something wrong blame it on snuffleupagus yeah totally yeah can anyone else see snuffleupagus do it yeah <laughs> He did. He did. And he's lurking on a mountain in Vermont, I bet, with two legs much shorter than the others. But you couldn't miss him. No. If you don't already subscribe to our podcast, please do right now. It's free. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, and then you won't miss a thing. You can also help us out by posting a review for us. Those reviews go a long way in helping others find us. We also love it when you email us through our website anytime. We love when you guys share your story leads with us or when you just say hi. That's just nice say hi. too, right? Yeah, for sure. You should also join our New England Legends Facebook group for more weirdness. And you can download our free New England Legends app in your app store. We'd like to thank our sponsors. Thank you very much to our Patreon patrons. And our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bazaar is closer than you think. Thank mm-hmm. you.